So can you guys see the screen, Forex Fundamentals, US Dollar Masterclass? Can you see that? Yep. All right. Brilliant. Okay, cool. So I'll get started. So um, welcome all. Um, so uh, in this, basically this group call, I guess, um, is, is I had an idea to kind of uh do another one of these videos and i haven't done these for maybe a couple of years but it was kind of driven by a um a question on on youtube and um basically one of the guys was saying that they wanted to just understand how fundamentals kind of drives uh price um if it if it really does drive price so i thought the best way to kind of do that is to demonstrate this and also as well for you guys to kind of just really see what um uh, I've been doing over the past uh, year or years, matter of fact, but to kind of get a snapshot of what I was doing uh, this year. And so when we look at the uh, the dollar index, right, and, it, and we use the equally weighted dollar index, uh, but you can do this on the DXY. So if you type in DXY, uh, you know, it's basically the same, well, s similar anyway. I prefer, I think the, 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 the equally weighted dollar index is more accurate. But what I'm going to be showing you is, um, and if I go back, is really why, you know, and uh, we were we were uh, looking at uh, long trades, um, you know, in, in periods where, you know, we, uh, where, where the dollar was appreciating. Uh, and then obviously where, you know, there were certain auctions as well that were going on because it wasn't always clear whether you should be buying or selling, right? And sometimes you can do, there's periods where you can do kind of both. You can buy and sell, and then you can have more of a sell bias. So I'm going to be going over uh, all of that and showing you, uh, you know, proof of that. And by the way, uh, all the information I'm going to be sharing is in, you know, the, uh, um, the uh, the Discord group, especially if you go to the United States and if you go back, I highly suggest that you really go back into, or you can do a search, matter of fact, if you wanted to, but you go back and these, all the articles I'm going to show you have, uh, have been documented. They're all here as well. So, so um, yeah, so there's that. So um, Forex Fundamentals, uh, US Dollar Masterclass, right? So focusing mainly on, well, actually, entirely on on the uh, on the dollar not really necessarily pairs but before i get into that it's just important to kind of brush up on uh, the basics of um of the uh, fundamentals and um, and uh, what i look at uh, from a basic kind of perspective so of course we know interest rates and differentials right so ultimately we're looking at dif differentials um from the start so typically uh, you want to buy uh, the currency that has if you've got currency a and currency b because obviously they're traded in pairs right you know this already but for anyone who's watching it doesn't you want to buy the uh, the um the uh central bank that is has the higher interest rate that's the starting point right so if bank a has um you know is 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 five percent and bank b is offering uh one percent right then you're looking to buy a and sell b now there is a nuance to that because it depends upon what the central bank is also doing with their interest rates so if you have um central bank a which is cutting rates yeah and you have a central bank uh B, that is actually hiking rates then in fact it, it should be normally is uh typically you would do the opposite right as one is actively trying to devalue their their currency cuts right it's, it's important to understand as well that cuts equals devaluation right devalue right and hiking is the opposite so hiking would be to appreciate the currency right so if a, if a central bank is actively cutting, they're trying to devalue or depreciate their currency. And if a currency and if a central bank is, um, is, is hiking rates, it means that they're actively trying to appreciate their currency. So um, the, and the reasons why they will do this is really to do with um, uh, the main driving factors, which is inflation and GDP. So inflation, again, just a quick summary is really currency valuation. So um, the the more that currencies or inflation rises, right? So inflation is actually prices. But if once you get if if inflation starts to rise, so it goes from you know two percent, which is a central bank's um, mandated inflation target, right? So that's the, their main target. If prices go, if if inflation is going higher, it actually means that the currency is devaluing, right? De devaluing, and um, so if it goes to three to four percent to five percent in real terms, the currency is getting weaker. It's devaluing, 
right? Depreciating. And it's the opposite, in fact, when you have uh, inflation uh, turn to kind of deflation. So if we get, you know, negative inflation, for example, you know, we get, you know, uh, minus 1%, minus 2%, et cetera. It's actually the opposite. It's um, the currency is actually appreciating, right? Appreciate. Right. And so when inflation is rising, yeah, because we have an inflation cycle and I'll get into cycles in, in a sec. But when you have if inflation is rising, then you then central banks have to do the opposite in terms of if it's being devalued, then they have to hike rates because remember, hiking rates. Is appreciation, right? They have to try to appreciate the currency in order to cap and stem D, the devaluation of the currency and in the same way that if you know we have deflation right so inflation is going towards one percent zero percent negative inflation which is deflation the currency is appreciating too much and so um central banks have to cut rates right sorry that's, that's meant to be cut right cut rates right which is basically means that they are devaluing or depreciating the currency right it's a devalue right, to counter current, uh, the, the deflation, which is appreciation, yeah? So everyone following so far? Yeah, everyone following? Yeah. All right, cool. So that's really, you know, one of the, uh, the, uh, the driving factors of interest rates and also as well gross domestic products. So typically when you have a growing economy, Right. So when you have uh, an economy that is expanding or in the boom phase of their economic cycle and uh, growth in the economy, um, uh, uh, central banks would typically high rates, right, typically high rates in that environment. And when you have uh, a, a contraction and a recession, right, central banks will typically cut rates. Right during uh, a recession, uh, mainly the, the cuts are due to, um, uh, to to also help businesses. Right, so in a recession where businesses are struggling, you don't really want to have higher borrowing costs. You want to kind of stimulate the economy by helping businesses by lowering uh, business um, uh, biz um, loans and things like that, so that they can kind of reinvest, um, you know, and and invest their. Uh, their money um, into into growing uh, and trying to obviously uh, yeah like I said grow their businesses during uh, hard times right so you're assisting um, not only is uh, uh, central bank cuts used to manage um, inflation but it's also used to um, help businesses um, uh, in a recession right in 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 hard times and so. Yeah, so basically, depending on what's happening with inflation in GDP, yeah, you will have um, cent central banks will typically tend to, you know, hike, hold or cut, right? So there's three options they have, hiking, holding, right, or cutting rates, right, depending on uh, what's happening. Now, um, going on to cycles, so... Um, one of the easiest ways to kind of understand what is typically happening um, is, is to kind of look at cycles. So you have, you know, an interest rate cycle. Yeah. So imagine this is interest rates. Uh, interest rates, IT. That's right, right. And you also have a uh, an inflation cycle, right? And you have... Right, inflation, and then you have a uh, business cycle, GDP, right? And typically, right, they move in, in sync, right? So whenever central banks are cutting rates, it's normally in an environment where inflation is going lower, right? And there's a threat, you know, going beyond their 2% target. And also GDP is contracting and potentially going into their recession, you know, bust slump phase of their cycle, right? And cycles will happen. So it's almost like night following day in the um, 
in the system that we have, um, this is typically what happens. Now, there are times where, you know, uh, inflation and interest rates don't necessarily uh, aren't always in sync. But if you look at the bigger picture, this is what typically happens. So if you know that a central bank is cutting rates, then you should look at the environment that you're in and you would see that inflation is obviously coming lower and with the, there's probably fears of some sort of um, recession on the horizon, right? And in the same way that if inflation is rising, right, and GDP is, you know, is growing in the expansion recovery phase and inflation is above that 2%, right, then you will have interest rates being hiked, yeah? So typically they follow each other. If you look at what's going on now, and we'll talk about the US dollar, of course, you'll see that, you know, the uh, the economy is potentially, there's fears of, of a contraction in the economy, inflation is going lower. So the Federal Reserve is looking to uh, cut rates and get ahead. And by the way, as well, um, interest rates do lag in the economy or the effect of interest rates do lag in the economy. So the, the Fed have to kind of, and central banks in general have to be kind of ahead, try to be ahead of the curve and kind of forecast and predict what's happening. Um because the effect of interest rates may not stop um, inflation um, and help, uh, you know, businesses in a recession uh, straight away. There's maybe a six to nine month lag, you know, minimum. So they have to kind of get ahead of the curve in order for them to uh, have a, an effect. You don't necessarily want to start cutting interest rates at, you know, uh, inflation at 2% um, because you may overshoot, right? So, but the, but the main point in this is just to understand that there are cycles and these cycles will happen, right? They definitely do happen and they repeat over and over and over again. Some cycles are more severe than others and some cycles look a bit different, slightly different in terms of leading and lagging. But ultimately, this is what is happening, um, uh, what we should keep our eye on. Also as well, um, fundamentals really is about buying the rumor, right? Um, so... When it comes to um, uh, uh, a lot of traders will uh, typically wait for the data to um, to be released, right? So, or important data. So let's say, for example, the um, so central bank is looking to uh, to kind of uh, cut rates, right? Cut rates and the cut is coming, um, you know, 18th of September tomorrow, right? So... Um, the money it, it was, is, has already been made because the smart money can see this cut coming um, sometimes a mile off, right? And so what they do is they price in the cut ahead of time. So retail traders will typically what happens is, is that they will look for the cut on the day and then start to, you know, um, sell, right? Or start to, you know, uh, position themselves. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. You can do that at the same time. But typically when... Um, you know, uh, to make money in, in the game is that you have to be ahead of everyone else, right? You have to buy the rumor. And rumors can start, you know, months in advance, which I'm going to basically show you as well, right? So it's buying the rumor, right? And selling the fact. Everyone's kind of heard that kind of term. And it's basically the market, maybe back in, you know, maybe two, three months ago, maybe in June, July, was expecting, you know, the potential for a cut depending on what was happening with data, right? And then it starts to um, price in. And now again, I'll go, I'll go over that when you see that um, with the dollar a bit later. And also as well, central bank focus. So um, it's really important to understand which um, data to kind of focus on. So a lot of traders will uh, typically tend to focus on, um, you know, uh, a manner of uh, data from home building to retail sales. And I'm not saying that those aren't important, depending upon, you know, the context of them. But central banks will tell you what they're looking at, right? In their central bank speeches, they will tell you specifically and Typically, it's around inflation and GDP. So um, if a central bank comes out and the Fed come out and say, um, we're focused on, for example, wage growth, right? Wages, right? Now, wages is, uh, is they're looking at inflation. It's an inflation measure, right? So if they're looking at wages and wage growth, then, um, then that's what, and, and they're saying that that's what's going to be a determining factor in 
you know, why they should cut rates, yeah, or why they're going to hike rates, then why would you look at, for example, I don't know, like I said, read something like retail sales, right? You're not going to look at retail sales because it's not going to move the needle for central banks, regardless of whether retail sales comes in positive or negative, right? And overall, that's not going to be a determining factor as to why central banks are going to cut rates, hold rates or hike rates, right? So it's important to, you know, filter out the noise, right? And really kind of focus in on what the central bank are focused on. And they will tell you, right, what they're focused on. Um, you know, there's, there's certain things like PCE, right, which is a measure, which is, I think this is the Fed's um, a preferred measure of inflation, for example. So there, there are nuances. But again, this is comes down to understanding um, what the central bank is focused on. And you guys know that I typically do post um, what the central bank is focused on in the uh, in the discord room and also as well of course one of the things that can um, affect a currency is risk sentiment and risk sentiment is just basically um, uh, whenever there are events that cause uh, fear uncertainty and some doubt in the market then uh, typical fundamentals may go out the window so um, you may ha you may have a situation where, um, for example, you might have a low yielding currency like the yen, <clears throat> and the yen might may, may be at zero percent, right, in terms of interest rates. But the yen is seen as a safe haven currency, meaning that in 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 you know a lot of uncertainty, maybe some sort of banking crisis or some war or something like that, uh, money would typically flow into uh, the, the Japanese yen, appreciating it, right. And but then once that risk sentiment is over and the, the problem has been resolved, then the fundamentals back, kick back in and then uh, the yen is normally uh, a sell at this current uh, point in time, though. The yen is actually a buy, but just for, for illustration purposes, right? So certain currencies will appreciate and devalue based on um, risk sentiment, whether there is uh, uncertainty, fear uh, in the market. So it's important to also understand that that does affect or can affect a uh, currency valuation um, in the short term. But overall, in the long term, it really is a medium and long term. It is about the Forex fundamentals. And ultimately, when I say, you know, the basics, understanding value, it's really seeing on a price chart if, um, you know, uh, prices have come down and whether you want this is cheap enough, right? If that if that is an area that is cheap or in fact, if, you know, a high is expensive and that's what I mean by value. So we have to determine whether the market thinks that a level is cheap or price is expensive. And the only way you can kind of determine that, in my opinion, is through understanding what gives currencies, um, you know, value. And this is basically uh, the basics. So David, sorry, said, uh, yeah, this is in view of an individual economy in isolation. Yeah. So this is our isolation. And what we're doing is comparing. Yeah, we're always comparing um, currencies. And so we compare in interest rate differentials. We compare inflation and GDP and where they are in their cycles. Um, and we compare, obviously, comparing what's happening with risk sentiment. Um, you know, if, if, for example, we're in a risk off environment, then you don't want to buy the Australian dollar, right? Or you don't want to necessarily buy commodity currencies, whereas you would want to buy, you know, the yen. So it's always about comparison. But in this example, I'm just focused mainly on the dollar, right? I'm going to focus mainly on the dollar. So, um, so with that being said, um, yeah. Okay. No worries. So with that being said, uh, let's get into really the, um, uh, one second. Let's, let me just go back to my pencil. Right. So let's get to the beginning of the year. Right. So in December, right. So let me, let me give you the context, right. So the context, uh, quickly was that the federal reserve, the market was getting a bit ahead of itself, but there was expectations in 2023, that in 2024, that there would be um, a lot of cuts coming, right? So the market was very, very bearish in the last like uh, few months uh, of the year from December, November, right? So this big drop. It was a bit unjustified, but we'll get into that now. So 
let's go back in time, right? So let's go back to the beginning of the year. So January the 3rd, right? This was some of the headlines. So Fed sees rates staying high for some time with cuts uh, eyed in 2024, right? So they're saying that interest rates is going to stay high for some time, right? So uh, the Federal Reserve policymakers agreed last month that it would be appropriate to maintain restrictive stance. So restrictive mean they're going to hold interest rates for some time while acknowledging they were probably at the peak rate and would begin cutting in 2024. Participants view the policy rate as likely or at near peak for this tightening cycle, according to the minutes. Right. So ultimately what they were saying was, and this is um, uh, an interest rate uh, chart of the US. So heading into 2024, which is here, um, basically the Federal Reserve was saying that they were going to look to um, uh, hold rates, right? But the market at the time was actually a bit bearish on the uh, dollar and thought that rate cuts were coming in March, yeah? So the Fed meeting, they basically saying, no, we're going to hold for longer. And so... Um, uh, on uh, January the 16th, uh, I think this was Davos. So Rogoff sees six uh, Fed rate cuts as pipe dream if economy holds up. So geopolitics, like nothing seen in my professional lifetime, there's still a 25% chance of a deep recession in the US, he reckons. So Federal Reserve won't deliver the six interest rate cuts traders are betting on for 2024 unless the US somehow succumbs to a deep recession, according to Harvard University professor Kenneth rug off right so remember i was saying to you about the cycles right when you have uh cycles move um in the same so whenever you so when you have a interest rate cutting cycle that's expected yeah then typically you would have a recession yeah so they kind of move in in, in the same uh, inflation interest rates um and gdp right they move in the same so the, the the market was expecting in uh last year going into uh january this year that there was going to be uh deeper cuts coming but rogoff was saying well no uh that's probably not going to happen unless of course we go into some sort of uh recession right so um rate cuts will be in a pipe dream so the market was pricing in six rate cuts meaning that they you know there was going to be uh, uh the, the the dollar should right go to the downside now the market can be wrong and the market is wrong right depending on the data right so the data needs to prove as well and i think i must have forgotten to actually mention this uh the data must support the narrative as well so you can buy the rumor sell the fact but the data must support the narrative right so as long as the data shows that the you know the, they're going into a recession then of course the rumor will gather some legs right but if the data doesn't support the rumor then the rumor is pretty much dead in the water so so ultimately you know traders were pretty much waiting on uh, the data to kind of support the narrative of uh rate six rate cuts this year so as we continue on um you know, Rogoff sees six Fed cuts pipe dream if economy holds up. So we were in a bit of a bit of a holding um, pattern, you know, kind of wait and see mode, right? So next was, again, um, Fed officials say data doesn't show it's time for a rate cut yet, right? And this was January the 19th. So the Fed, again, were looking at the data and saying that it's premature to think that cuts are around the corner, Yeah. And so, um, and that's what the data was, was was showing to the Fed. So if the rate cuts are being priced out of the market, so they were being priced into the market here, and now the Fed had basically turned around and saying, no, I think the market is wrong, right? They think the market is wrong. So around January 16th, this is basically what was happening, right? So sentiment started to shift a bit, yeah? And also as well, I just want to go back to my currency summary report. Now, you guys can see this as well. Now, if you go to the, um, uh, one second, I'm looking at, sorry, here we go. Right. So if you go to this symbol here, right, um, you can click on um, the changes, right? And it goes all the way back to, um, you can scroll all the way back to, um, to when I created this, basically, but we go back to the beginning of the year, you know, March, and um, you'll see that 
around January the 12th, my analysis was that the you know, FOMC and unemployment show resilient economy, ISM shows cracks and slow down, PPI inflation falls unexpectedly, market has priced in more cuts than Fed dot plot for 2024, rate cuts are being priced in to start March, although I think it is too early, right? So dollar is still far from a recession as Q3 GDP data was higher than expected. Rate cuts are aligning with election cycle. Soft landing narrative may still support the dollar. The uh, dollar seasonally appreciates in January, February. So my 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 bias was more more of an auction, meaning that you can look for buys at lows and sells at highs. But ultimately, I was thinking that it was. Um, uh, uh, rate cuts are definitely too early. So many of you guys will know that, you know, beginning of the year, I was a bit more long than I was uh, short. So um, this is basically what was happening at the time, right? So again, 19th. And then we had um, the January the 25th, GDP grew 3.3% last quarter, capping unexpectedly strong year. So once GDP came in and was not contracting or going into the recession, as um, the uh, economist at Davos was saying, then the market really had to kind of price out the, um, the, the, the rate cuts, right? So less rate cuts means uh, a, more of an appreciating currency. This is the reason why you started seeing the dollar, you know, move to the upside, right? So pretty much the data supported or went against the narrative, right, that there was going to be six rate cuts. So the market started pricing out cuts. So going from six cuts, which was very bearish, to in fact having to reduce the um, rate cuts because there was no recession on the horizon, right? So January Data was supporting um, uh, rate holds. So Powell tells 60 Minutes Fed is wary of cutting rates too soon. So that was the headline, right? So um, it says uh, Federal Reserve Chair Powell said Americans may have to wait beyond March for the central bank to cut rates as officials look for more economic data to confirm that inflation is headed down to 2%, right? So ultimately, um, the market was um, was wrong. But at the end of the day, the market doesn't have to be right um, to make, you don't have to be right to make money, right? Whether, whether rate cuts are coming or not, if you're buying the rumor, you can make money on the rumor. Um, and if it turns out the rumor is wrong, if the, if the rumor was pushing prices in your favor anyway, you can make money, right? So that is really how the money is made. It's not made by the act being correct. Yeah, it's about really um, riding the rumor wave. And if you are correct, fine, that's an extra bonus, right? You kind of look smart. But at the end of the day, it's about if the if the market is, is pricing in or pricing out uh, currencies or, 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 or data, or, or the result of um, some sort of economic uh, news, then that is where the money is made, right? So basically, Powell was saying, no, nope, it doesn't make sense. And I guess the market had to realign their, um, uh, their, their biases, right? And it says here, this was February the 13th, right? So inflation tops forecasts in blow to Fed rate cut hopes. And so core consumer prices rose by the most in eight months in January. Traders delay bets on first rate cut and mark down March odds. So again, understanding that in order for central banks to cut rates, inflation has to be going down to their 2% target. But we clearly see here in February, um, you know, we see that um, in core inflation was not coming down. In fact, it, it, it rose. And so the result of that is traders had to delay the first rate cut and mark down March odds, meaning that they reduced the odds of a March rate cut. So by February, right, February, was it uh, uh, 19th, right, prices were up here. Now, of course, we did have a, a period where prices went to the downside. But again, we understand overall that, um, uh, you know, there's going to be pullbacks and deeper pullbacks in order for smart money to get involved, right? Um, Short-term traders may follow price, but ultimately it's really about, well, we get to March anyway, and you'll see what happens in March. But the rumor was really to kind of buy the dollar, right? Because again, rate cuts were being priced out of the market. So CPI was, was rising. We had 
uh, decent and good um, GDP. So really no threat of a rate cut, right? So the, the Fed will not looking to devalue their currency just yet. So uh, we get to um, February the 20th, the market start to speculate if next Fed move is up, not down, right? So, you know, there was some real kind of positive sentiment, um, in fact, um, I say positive or negative, but basically maybe a, a, a kind of a 180 basically in 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 um, the market's thinking was that there could be another hike coming, right? So this was, again, the rumors that was happening. So the investors are beginning to war game how the Federal Reserve can, can manage a U.S. economy that just won't land with some debating whether interest rate hikes will be needed only weeks after a steady run of reductions appeared all but certain. So again, the rumor was starting that there could potentially be um, rate hikes, right? In in February, in, in towards the end of February, February the 20th, February being a, sh a shorter month, right? So you start to see uh, rumors start to develop, right? And it says here, the big bond steepener is flopping as the Fed delays rate cuts. The swap traders now see first cut most likely coming in June. So now they started to push um, out rate cuts, right? So it was May before, so it's March before, and now it's June. Sorry, yeah, Digo, you can ask a question. Uh, what's the question that you have? Um, yeah, sorry. My question is, uh, you said that we can uh, buy the rumor and um, sell the fact, but it need to be based in the in the data. So my oh, question yes. is, can we buy the, the rumor as well uh, based in the sentiment or we should always do it with the data? Because what I'm seeing in now um, since Monday with um, USD is kind of people are uh, buying uh, are selling the dollar based in the rumor or the sentiment that the market will um the Fed will cut for uh 50 50 base point not 25 data is not supporting it but people are selling the the US based in the sentiment could we do that or uh, okay. we should always focus in the data what I'll do is for current events for current events right now remember that question again Right. But for current events, I'm going to leave that for now because I'm going otherwise I'll get sidetracked. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I definitely want to get through the webinar. But um, that's a good question. Remember it. I'll remember it as well. But I thought it was a question about what was happening back then. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, for any kind of current events, I'm going to leave that until after. Yeah. OK, good. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. But I will answer. It. I will get to it. Right. So. Um, so what we'll do one second, one sec. <clears throat> right. So, yeah, so basically um, swaps traders now see first cut and they were basically pushing out the uh, uh, the cuts for June. So cuts were supposed to come in May, um, sorry, March. Now, now it's coming in June, which is basically now the market has to price out the, uh, the, the, the the amount of devaluation going into the market, right? So as we head obviously into, and this was uh, February, the end of uh, February, right? February the 28th. Um, and then as we head into uh, into March, March the 5th, this is a Reuters article. It says here, a stronger than expected US economy is buoying the dollar, frustrating investors who would bet the currency would wilt under a barrage of interest rate cuts that have yet to materialize, right? So the data is not supporting the rumor. Yeah. Now, as we go forward, um, we can see that the US core inflation tops forecast. So this was March the 12th, right? Uh, tops forecast, again, reinforcing Fed caution. So underlying US inflation topped forecast for a second month uh, in February as prices jumped for used cars, air travel and clothes, reinforcing the Federal Reserve's cautious approach to cutting rates. So again, remember, they need inflation to fall, but, in, but inflation was... Um, was obviously a bit sticky, right? And meaning it was um, it wasn't falling in the way that they wanted. So by March, um, you know, fifteenth, um, again that data was supporting less rate cuts and more rate holds, which was appreciating started appreciating the dollar, right? So that's mid March, March twelfth, and March twelfth was around here, right? So we're at these lows. So that was prices pulled back, inflation came out. Right, buy dollars. 
Um, again, March 13th, bond yields jump as hot inflation curbs where, uh, Fed wages, right? So this was just, again, more headlines and saying that the Fed would go look at, you know, bond traders who are, you know, some of the smartest traders and they're very sensitive to, you know, interest rates and inflation, and the economy, what the economy is doing, uh, bond traders are basically saying that, look, at the end of the day, um, you know, they may have got it wrong and that the Fed are likely to hold rates based on the data. So uh, Fed's Bostic now anticipates just one rate cut this year. So the data was basically now supporting that potentially that there could only be one rate cut and this was in march the 22nd so this is more again of more of a sentiment thing where you know where you get central bankers come out and they um and they and they talk about what their opinion is and what you know the fed chair should do with uh, interest rates and they are some of some of them are voting members as well and so again what you're seeing is is um you know the fed basically telling you that they think that going from one, oh, sorry, going from six rate cuts at the beginning of the year, right, which was being priced in now to one because the data doesn't support that. You're seeing again the dollar, you know, towards the end, 20th of March, move higher. Um, and then we get into April. So I just want to go back as well into the currency summary report. So towards... As we as we kind of flip um, January uh, again, uh, I started my buy bias. You can see, in fact, I think it was here January the thirty first. I mean, my buy bias was definitely in 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 January. But um, what I did was, I remember in February, I started basically separating, so you could see rather than doing it my analysis in the uh, in here. It was really kind of uh, at the top right here. So that's where I started saying, all right, well, I'm going to be, you know, long. So I had a buy bias in February, right? So February um, the 3rd, which was basically, you know, back here, right? Looking for long trades. And that kind of stayed, um, as you guys know, typically when I'm going to, if I've got a bias, it typically stays for months. And so as we get to towards, you know, March, right, 15th, it was always a buy bias, right? Towards April, right, end of March. April still buy I said buy bias until disinflation and rising unemployment right so buy bias is um you know pretty much week in week out and uh, this is what we were seeing on the dollar so we approach April now right so we're in April and we start to now uh, see the Fed on track to cut in June, Morgan Stanley's uh, Zenta says so again there were some rumors starting to come in about the uh, Fed potentially looking to cut rates in June uh, from Morgan Stanley, right? And um, also as well, uh, I say also, but sorry, we had uh, jobs, sorry, come out. And obviously, again, when a rumor starts, you need the data to back it up, right? So US jobs roar again as payrolls jump 303,000 uh, and, and unemployment drops. So remember, in, in, in an economy where you have contraction, right? Heading into a recession, you have high unemployment and low employment. But this was the opposite, right? You had high employment and unemployment dropped. So how can the Federal Reserve or how can anyone, any bank um, and trader really justify that the Fed are going to cut rates, right, in that environment? You're just not going to, they're just not going to cut in that environment, right? So um, April the 5th, this is what happened. So again, more dollar buys, right? It was really about buying the dollar beginning of April. So again, pullback, a little bit of a pullback, and then we had you know, prices move to the upside, right? So March payrolls. So again, no recession on the horizon. The economy is doing good. Jobs, no need to cut rates. Fed faces soft deadline for rate cuts as inflation progress stalls. And this was April the 10th. So again, positive news in terms of, um, you know, uh, the uh, if you're long on 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 the uh, on the dollar, right? 
So US yields saw as traders see Fed delaying first cut to December now, right? Remember, it was June. We just saw JP Morgan say June. And now the data doesn't support June. And now uh, traders are seeing a delay to the first cut to December. So again, we went from six, you know, to potentially now one in December is the rumor. April 2025, yeah? So um, it says here, Treasury slumped and traders further trimmed their outlook on the pace of Federal Reserve rate cuts, deterred by a US GDP report that highlighted sticky price pressures. So inflation not coming down and GDP is doing well. So again, April, great month, right? No need to sell the dollar, right? There would have been a lot of traders trying to sell the dollar. I'm not saying that they wouldn't have made any money. You could make, you know, sell some, you know, uh, sell wherever it highs. But the money was made really to the upside. So, um, you know, we get to May the 1st. So Fed to signal delay of first interest rate cuts. And again, um, you know, they're poised to keep interest rates steady for six consecutive meetings and signal no plans to cut in the near future after higher than expected inflation, right? So inflation needs to come down to their 2% target, keeping rates on hold, right? Only supports the US dollar as we head into May. So let's continue on. Yeah, so May, May the second traders pull forward first. Uh, full uh, Fed rate cut to November ahead of jobs. So we went from December to now, potentially the rumors starting, maybe they might cut a little bit earlier, right? So that was May the 2nd. So bond traders pulled forward their expectation for the Federal Reserve's first interest rate cut, fueling a rally in treasuries ahead uh, of a key US jobs report that will shed light on the state of the economy. So Bond traders, when you see these types of headlines, um, you know, it's definitely worth listening. And I guess, you you know, this is kind of what happened at the beginning of, of May, right? So maybe the market was, I say maybe, but the market was maybe pricing in the potential for a cut, you know, maybe a month earlier. So we've got a bit of devaluation, right, that came into a nice demand zone around here. So the rumour started that it could be in um, November, right? So get a bit of a pullback, but nothing too drastic. Then um, we get uh, weaker jobs numbers, right, on, on May the 3rd as well. So weaker jobs numbers boost the expectation of a September rate cut. So again, between, you know, the 1st of May to the 3rd of May, um, there was obviously some forecasting going on. And we started to see the market price in at the beginning of May. The data started supporting maybe, in fact, from going from December which was the expectation in April to maybe September, right? So then rate cuts coming forward, earlier rate cuts devalued the currency. So the rumor again now is starting and the data is starting to back that up, yeah? The data is starting to back that up. So traders pair back bets on September to start Fed rate cuts. So again, more, more data basically saying that the market now May 14th um, that the Fed may start to look to uh, cut rates in September. And um, bond traders trim Fed rate cuts with Treasury shorts uh, revived. So again, we see here bond traders are once again growing doubtful that the Federal Reserve will deliver two interest rate cuts that were priced into the swaps curve just last week. So swaps market and now pricing in 40 basis point cuts of rate cuts for the end of the year with the first full 25 basis point of easing priced into the November policy meeting, right? So again, it was like a bit split, whether it's September or November. So when you get a bit of uncertainty um, in the market as to what may start to happen, you start to then see what is known as a sideways moving market or a range, right? An auction. So, um, you know, traders are basically saying, you know, that, you know, some traders are saying, well, that's going to be expensive for the dollar. That could be cheap for the dollar. Um, but when you get a bit of uncertainty in the direction of travel, then you start to get this. And this is what happened for the next uh, few months from, you know, from basically from mid-May to, uh, to August, but the market had pretty much priced in what they thought the value of the currency, you know, was or is with a either a September, right, potential September or November cut, right? So we 
move on. 31st of May, US inflation relief keeps the door open to a September rate cut. So obviously the inflation now starts to come down. We start to see that the market may start to price in a September rate cut. So ultimately, when we started seeing that, Let's go to. Uh, I just go through this as well. So remember, I had a in throughout April buy bias, April buy bias, uh, end of April. Let's get to beginning of May, right? So May, I still had a buy bias as well, and then around here, yeah. So May the eighth. So maybe we go back to May the third. So I changed my bias. Yeah. So May the first was when I started to change my bias. So May the third, right, where I went from being you know, buying until, you know, saying more of an auction. So looking for buys and sells, right, against um, looking for reasons to buy or sell. And this is basically so when we look at, you know, what happened towards um, May, right, we got that type of price action start to come, right? You can look for buys, right, or sells, because right, there was a lot of uncertainty uh, in the market in terms of what the Federal Reserve are likely to do. And basically, dollar strength and, and, and the rumor that they're likely to, you know, high crates or maybe hold until December was starting to now um, being priced out of the market. So just to show you what you know my thinking was at the time in sync with what was happening. So again, September looked like it was going to be the one not necessarily a definite, but the rumor started. Bond traders piled into fresh bets of faster pace of Fed cuts. The dovish options targeted while short uh, covering seen in futures. Uh, Fed swaps shift full rate to cut to November from December. So this is where we started to get that weakening, right? But as well, I have just want to also say as well that even though the dollar, we're looking at dollar in isolation, Always keep in mind that at the time, the dollar wasn't the worst currency. So although, you know, it looked like, you know, well, the dollar should sell off now. Remember that you're comparing one currency against another or you're comparing the dollar against several other currencies. And so when you're doing that, you have to take that into account. So the dollar necessarily wasn't an all out sell because even though there were rate cuts coming and the market was pricing that in, with the Canadian dollar, for example, with the Swiss franc, um, and even with the euro to a certain degree, um, they were looking to cut rates before the dollar, which meant that the dollar was still stronger against those currencies. So that's why we didn't see really an imminent sell-off of the dollar. The dollar was still holding its valuation because there were other central bankers that were looking to cut before the Federal Reserve were. So keep that in mind. But ultimately, you know, we've getting now rumors that they could start to, um, you know, uh, cut rates in November. So November, September was really the uh, the um, the expectation. And by the way, we're in, you know, around we're in May. Right. So uh, this was June. So we enter into June now. So, again, the rumor is starting that they're going to be cutting in November. That's around what, maybe about four months ahead. Yeah. And then, of course, we get the data, strong U.S. payrolls and wage growth push back bets for Fed rate cuts. Right. So that was June. So although we did then started to see a bit of a sell off. Yeah. Come into the market. Guess what? There was data supporting, in fact, uh, you know, a stronger dollar. Right. That that maybe September wasn't on the cards because we had the headline that strong U.S. payrolls and wage growth push back bets for Fed cuts. So, again, the rumor has to be substantiated, you know, by the data. And if it's not, then, you know, you, you're you not going to get, you know, the, the sell-off that we think. So June the 7th, right, this is what was happening. You look at the dollar, June the 7th, we started to see what prices find the low, right? And prices started to move higher for the next, you know, month. So heading forward, Right. Treasuries trim gains with Fed traders split on 2024 rate cuts. So market still favors two quarter point cuts as Fed projects one. Powell says actual path for rates will depend on, fu on future data. So, again, we had, as I said before, 
um, there was a bit of uncertainty and, you know, there wasn't necessarily much clarity as to what exactly was going to happen. There was a lot of speculation. And when you have a bit of uncertainty and clarity, this is where the market goes sideways, right? When you have a clear direction, you typically tend to get prices move in a trend. So the market split, the Fed are thinking, you know, maybe they're not agreeing with the market, but they're pretty bit more hawkish. So that's what was happening at the time. So Fed diverges from global peers in new era of higher for longer. So what we had here was basically, and as I said to you before, the Federal Reserve were looking to at the time, and this was from June the 14th, so mid-June, where the Federal Reserve, it says here, moved to signal fewer interest rate cuts this year, depends on divergence from peers who already have begun to ease, right? So yes, the dollar, you know, there was cuts coming on the horizon, but at the same time, other central banks had already begun to start cutting. Yeah, so it says here, this is in contrast with the Bank of Canada, which lowered its benchmark overnight rate by 25 basis points to, to 4.75 last week. So whereas the Fed were, uh, were, were holding rates, Bank of Canada were cutting rates. So Fed's favoured inflation gauge slows, supporting case for cuts. So again, data started coming out end of June, June the 28th, that was obviously supportive of more of a cut because inflation started coming down, right? So it started to slow, right, towards the end of June going into July. So by uh, July, again, we were at July highs, end of June. So again, the rumour started that we could start to cut rates. So in July, guess what? We saw this start to happen, right? So... Um, Again, headlines, July 5th, cooling US jobs market keeps September cut at play. So we just saw that inflation started cooling, and then we're starting to see now job markets starting to cool as well, right? So again, the rumor is starting that September starts to uh, cut. So again, we start to see more moves to the downside, right? As we head into uh, August, and it says here, uh, August the 1st, Fed on course for September rate cut as risks to job market grow. So Federal Reserve Jerome Powell signals central bank officials are on course to cut rates in September unless inflation progress stalls, citing risks of further labor market weakening, right? So the data wasn't supporting rate hikes or rate holds. In fact, the data at the time was starting to support rate cuts. And so again, this is the 1st of August. So as we get to August the 1st, right, beginning of August, which is around here, the rumour starts that they're going to cut rates, yeah? And again, the data needs to support that. So again, US unemployment rate rises again, cementing path to Fed rate cut August the 2nd, yeah? So August the 2nd, uh, let me just, sorry, let me just clear some of this, uh, some of this off. So we get August the 2nd, right, which is here, about 1st, 2nd, right? Data is basically showing that jobs, unemployment are rising. So that's the sign of a contracting economy. Non-farm payrolls rose 114 in July, below most estimates, right? So again, the room of, of the cut is coming now, devaluation. Then we start to see core inflation eases a four-month uh, ceiling Fed rate cut, right? So now the market's pricing in. So we can see from August the 14th, the data is supporting Fed rate cuts. And in fact, let me just go back to what I was saying around the time. So my thing was we were in an auction, remember, throughout June, July. So we're in June at the moment. So auction meaning that you can look for reasons to buy or sell. So remember in June, you could sell at lows, buy, um, uh, sorry, buy at lows, sell at highs, right? But as we get into, as we get into July, you can see still an auction. And then we get into mid-July, again, still auction, buy low, sell high, right? And then we get to August, August was my sell bias. July was my sell bias, end of July. So yeah, so I changed my sell bias 
in July, right? So again, ahead of the curve, right? When you see these things coming, right? So end of July around here is when I said, look, I'm looking for a sell bias now. And then the data came out supporting that. Yeah. So as we then go to, sorry, we go to um, the data, August the 14th, right? We were already looking for sales. The data started to show that the Fed is likely to continue to, uh, or looking to uh, cut in September. U.S. payrolls marked down by most since 2009 in preliminary data, and this was August the 21st. Early revisions showed 818 fewer jobs in the year through March. Pace of job growth is still healthy, but moderation began sooner. So this was quite a big thing where it was a massive miss uh, in terms of jobs, uh, the jobs they said that they created. Uh, actually, it wasn't there. And again, it, it just fueled the speculation that the economy is contracting, inflation coming down. Again, we've got this drop, right? So Fed favoured. Uh, inflation gauge, gauge's mild gain uh, sets the stage for rate cuts. A core PCE advanced 0.2% in July in line with, in, with expectations and customer, uh, so consumer spending accelerated slightly on car purchases. So the data was basically just showing uh, that the uh, it wasn't going to change really the Fed's mind when it came to uh, cutting rates, right? Although there was a slight increase, but it was still low enough to... Uh, to uh, uh, continue or to, to, to not convince the uh, Fed to, uh, to, to hike rates or hold rates in September. And then we get to September the 4th um, and it says rate options show rising bets on a half point, right? So we started, you know, we, we, we were seeing that there was potential 25 basis point cut, but then we started to see in September the 4th, in fact, they might cut a bit deeper, right? So September the 4th, Right, which is around here, we were already at these lows. And so once that started to happen again, any pullbacks are really just selling opportunities for the dollar, right? So when that rumor started to come out that they were looking to cut by maybe 50 basis points, again, just continue shorting, right? There's no reason to, 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 to buy the, uh, the dollar. And then we get to September the 6th, U.S. hiring comes up short in possible warning sign for Feds. Jobs missed forecast in August as prior months revised down. So again, more unemployment, employment data showing that the, the economy is contracting. Yeah, so that was September the 6th. So again, continue to sell, right? Because ultimately, the Fed are looking to cut. And if you see as well, and remember that the rumors started around July when I started um, end of August, right? So beginning of August, August, end of July, that they were looking to cut in September. The money has been made, right? The money has been made on the shorts way before we even get to, you know, uh, interest rate uh, cuts and what is actually going to happen, right? So the rumor has been made. The rumor has, uh, has driven prices to the downside. So again, the data backing up the rumor, hiring comes up short, impossible warning sign for Fed. And traders see half point, um, Fed cut likelier than quarter point. So again, more bearish data or bearish rumors coming out for the um, uh, for the for the dollar, right? And that's really uh, the 16th, right? So updated uh, 16th of September. So that's uh, that was yesterday. So ultimately, what you've seen uh, over the past well, year, right, is the reasons for prices to move higher when the Fed were looking to price out rate cuts or the market was pricing out rate cuts because um, the data wasn't supporting the narrative, right? And actually the data was supporting the opposite, right? And then we started to get the data support rate cuts, right? Finally, we get to rate cuts, so six rate cuts were being priced in at the end of last year. And then the Fed pushed back on that. And then we had what we had as I've gone through it, right? So that's just an illustration of really how fundamentals push 
price over the medium to long term. I get it. Traders, you know, um, who go down to the lower time frames and are trying to apply fundamental analysis to a five minute chart and, a, you know, a, maybe a 30 pip range. It doesn't really work like that because there are institutions that need to buy and sell. And so they buy and sell in in, in uh, over, over uh, you know, medium to long term time frames and they need they want to buy for cheap. And so, you know, going down to five minute time frames and one minute time frames and start, start and say, well, I want to get long here, um, you know, at a level of, you know, demand. It doesn't really make any sense unless you take into account the higher time frames and looking where you are, because you can be bullish on the dollar, right? You can bullish on any currency, but you can also have, right, maybe a week where you get prices pulled back. Now, on a lower time frame, that might look like a massive, you know, um, you know, trend to the downside. And then traders are saying, well, Leon said he was long, you know, he said to get long on the, on the dollar. And we've seen, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six days of, you know, a massive sell off. Right. But it's not a massive sell off when you consider and you zoom out and you think that really the trend was really to the uh, to the upside. Right. So always look at the daily, the weekly time frames and um, kind of have that time horizon and then look at the lower time frames for your entries. If you want to enter on, you know, the lower time frames, that's more than fine. But the levels that you should be really looking towards are really kind of daily supply, daily demand zones um, on currency pairs, as well as the currency indexes. And it's not every single day or even every single week, you know, you want to be a buyer, right? Or you can be a buyer. You kind of have to wait for pullbacks to come on the higher time frames, and that may, may take a week or even two weeks, maybe even a month or so, right? For prices to pull back to a level where you want to be a buyer. But ultimately, the money was made in the first half of the year based on rumors that there was going to be no cuts, right? And cuts were being priced out. And then, as we started to get in July, end of July, beginning of August, cuts, the rumor started. And then we had um, this happen. So, Fundamentals is what moves price over the medium to long term. And I, I defy and I challenge anyone to tell me otherwise. But um, any questions, by the way, guys, any questions? Any questions on that? I know Digo had to go, he said. So I'll maybe get to his question another time. Anyone else got any questions? Welcome, Ruby Ron. No, just like to add, uh, just to add I like the weekly view too yeah absolutely right whether it's the daily or the weekly it's really just understanding um where you are in terms of uh you know uh, bargain prices and pullbacks and you find that easier to spot the ranges yeah 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 yeah, yeah definitely however you spot them David is um is uh it's great, you know. I mean, whether it's done on a daily, weekly, you know, maybe a sort of time horizon, maybe the, the one month time horizon, looking at you know the ranges from there. Um, but ultimately, if you have, if you follow the fundamentals, you know, and what really is dr going to be driving prices, and not all the time we're going to get it one hundred percent right. No one can do that, but this really should be your guiding light, right? This should be your guiding light, and if you can understand this. And the data and, you know, and kind of filter out the noise and kind of keep your finger on the pulse when it comes to what the rumor is uh, and what the narrative is. And as long as the data supports that narrative, then um, pretty much you should be on the right side of the market more often than not. Uh, your account is up 3% this month. Ah, oh, brilliant. Excellent. You're very welcome, by the way. You're very welcome, David. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Right, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, end this. I hope you found it useful. I really do. It's just a reminder. And this, by the way, as well, this can be applied to all currencies, right? Can be applied to all currencies. And again, just to reiterate, remember we're looking for divergences. So, if currency shouldn't be looked at in isolation, if you know whatever's happening with the dollar, right? Whether it's you know we're looking to cut rates, whether they're looking to hike rates, whether we're looking to hold rates, right? 
the, the when you go to a currency pair, let's say for example the dollar Swiss or the dollar yen, it's it's a case of all right, what is the Swiss franc doing? What the what is the Swiss National Bank doing with their policies? What's going on in their economy? What is the Japanese yen and the Bank of Japan um, doing with their monetary policy? And if it's if it's if it's better, meaning and I say better, but let's say for example the Swiss franc are cutting more than the dollar, no matter how bad the dollar may seem, right? If the Swiss franc are in a worse position, you still want to buy the dollar, right? Because it's all about the dog with the least fleas, right? Who's the dog with the least fleas? And the dog with the least fleas out of the two, if this was the US dollar and that was the Swiss franc, you'd want to be a buyer of the, the, the dollar still. No matter what happens and whatever the headlines and the sensational headlines online, you know, the dollar collapse and dollar crash, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's kind of like... um to kind of get you to, you know, um, to kind of focus on one, whereas with Forex pairs, you always got to compare the two, right? Who's in the worst position, who's in the best position, and then buy and sell. So that's really what you're looking for. Uh, will we watch? Okay, no worries, Ruby One. All right. All right, guys, what well, I'm going to um, end the uh, the call and uh, I'll have this, uh, this up later, yeah? Take care, guys. Take care. No props, Dave. Take care.